As the 2024 race to the White House heats up, a lot of campaign messaging will be coming at us from every corner and every side. But it, not all of it is going to be real. A new federal bulletin warns that bad actors could use AI to create fake videos, spread disinformation, and disrupt elections. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest. During the primary season, a fake robocall impersonating President Joe Biden told New Hampshire voters to stay home. It is a real-life example of AI interfering in elections already. It accelerates the speed at which bad information can move. It increases the volume through which it gets out there in the world. That's one of the bigger new threats that we haven't faced yet that we just we're not too sure about yet. The U.S. Election Assistance Commission has created an AI toolkit to help election administrators, and federal officials say that they're working on a full-court press to defend against the new threats and ensure that this upcoming election is, in fact, secure. Here in California, election officials have already been officially tracking and combating misinformation for more than a half decade. In 2018, the Secretary of State's office received $3 million to establish the Office of Election Cybersecurity. They monitor, their specialized teams monitor social media posts for misinformation, determine how dangerous it is, and if necessary, ask social media companies to pull down those posts. In 2020, Cal Matters reported that out of the 31 posts that the OAC asked to be removed, social media companies took down 24 of them. But it's not specific to deep fakes, and the office cannot actually force the companies to remove misleading posts. So a local lawmaker is trying to change that. A new bill that just passed the assembly would require large online platforms to restrict deep fakes of candidates or elected officials. Joining me now is the author of that bill, State Assembly Member Mark Berman. First, can you uh, talk about the need for this bill? Why now and how would you enforce it? Yeah, Devin, thanks for having me and thanks for the good question. I actually authored the law to create the Office of Election Cybersecurity back in 2018 as well. But since then, we have seen uh, AI, we've seen deep fake technology become faster, cheaper, and more available to more people. Uh, and that means that it's that much more important that we as government try to get ahead of this technology to protect the integrity of our elections by preventing the most malicious of deep fake images and audio or video that falsely uh, portray a candidate or an elected official as doing or some doing or saying something that they did not do or say. And, and so that is what this bill uh, hopes to accomplish, and it puts a little more responsibility on the social media platforms uh, to play a bigger role. You know, sometimes it feels a little bit like whack-a-mole, right? The, 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 what AI enables is the creation of these deep fakes quickly and with relative ease. So are these companies going to be able to keep up perhaps with the pace, the tempo at which these are being created and posted online? It's a great question, and we're working with engineers who used to work uh, at these social media platforms. We're also trying to work with the platforms themselves to understand around implementation and what they're actually capable of doing. And, and the bill does not require perfection, but it says that if the social media platforms should reasonably know that this content was uh, created by by artificial intelligence, manipulated content that portrays candidates or elected officials as doing something that they didn't do or say, and they have the ability to remove that content, then then they're responsible for doing so. Um, we, we, we know, and I think the social media companies really want to play a bigger and more important role in protecting our democracy. They just, you know, sometimes need a little nudge, a little direction uh, on understanding what we expect of them, uh, at least here in California. You know, I have a question about the willingness of the, of the social media companies to really be active enforcers of this space because you've often heard them historically say, we're just a platform. We're not going to moderate the content that appears on our platform. That's the responsibility of, of others. Do you get the sense that the companies really want to be on the forefront of enforcing this? I think some are more open to it than others, uh, and I definitely think there's different philosophies with with the different companies. But I know, I, I do truly believe that the leaders of these companies don't want their platforms to be ab abused and weaponized to undermine and weaken our democracy. For, for the vast majority of these platforms, I, I truly believe that. 
Um, and so we're just trying to help them think of new ways uh, and, and additional things that they can do to remove that content uh, and, and you know, make sure that as many, as, as few voters as possible are deceived or led to believe that candidates did something or said something when those candidates never did that. We don't have much time, but one last question to button things up, or at least two sort of interconnected. What's next, and is there enough time to get this done ahead of the November election? Because we're staring at it. Yeah, it's, I had a bill five years ago to kind of start this process that's currently in law regulating uh, deep fake technology. That it's more on the user than it is on the social media platform. So we already have some uh, tools in place to try to discourage people from, from spreading that type of misinformation and disinformation. But I really think that's something that we as a society need to really pay more attention to is media literacy. And, and civic education, because like you said, the technology is constantly going to be changing. We need to, to really make sure that the next generation, uh, our, our future leaders, have the skills they need to be more critical viewers of the content they're being bombarded with online and on social media platforms. And so, and then my hope is that those students can actually teach their parents and their grandparents and uncles and aunts. And so that's an effort that I had last year to require uh, media literacy get integrated into K-12 12 education and something that I think there's a lot of bipartisan support uh, so that people, as technology changes and as bad actors find new ways to try to push out misinformation and disinformation, that people just have the skills to know, wait a second, you know, why is this person posting this? What are they trying to accomplish? And where can I go to do my own research uh, right. so that I can decide whether or not I believe what's, what's being put in front of me? So I think that's something that needs a lot more attention, uh, a lot more, more effort. All right, thank you so much for your time today. Assembly Member Berman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your efforts in this, in this arena. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, still ahead, a closer look at the potential damage from deep fakes and how they've gotten more sophisticated in just the last few years. Plus, an extreme violation of privacy, fraudsters using technology to put people's faces on pornography, and how U.S. lawmakers say they're working to fight back on behalf of the victims. This afternoon, we're diving into deep fakes and the damage and confusion that they can cause. They've gotten more convincing as technology gets more advanced. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data. It's really sad. Here's the thing. That video of Nancy Pelosi from 2019 was slowed down to make her seem drunk. It was posted to a conservative Facebook page and viewed millions of times. And just two weeks later, two artists posted a deepfake video of Mark Zuckerberg. Now, at the time, Facebook said that it would suppress the Pelosi video to keep it from showing up in searches. In April, Meta updated its policy around artificial intelligence. It started putting made-with-AI labels on AI-generated videos, pictures, and audio. The company says it has 100 fact-checkers to review AI content. People also have the option to self-disclose if their posts were made with AI. Now, some bad actors are also using AI to create deepfake pornography, and members of Congress are working on a plan to make it illegal to share those images and punish the posters. CBS reporter Jolene Kent spoke with lawmakers leading that effort and met with a woman who's fighting back. I really felt like my whole world fell apart at that moment. Breeze Liu says she was shocked when a friend discovered her face superimposed on pornographic images and videos. What did you think? You have to look at how many views are there and um, how many people have violated you. I just didn't want to live anymore because the shame was was too too much for me to bear. Who was behind this? I do know who the perpetrator is. When I went to the police, the police did not um, really do anything about it. The police actually called me a prostitute. They slut shamed me. Lou said when law enforcement did not pursue the issue, the perpetrator made more deep fakes of her, creating more than 800 links across the internet. And Lou is not the only one. There were more than 21,000 deepfake porn videos online last year, up more than 460% compared to the year before. People have also created artificially generated intimate images of celebrities like Taylor Swift. 
it's an increasingly common problem facing teens across the country as well. From California to Illinois to New Jersey to Florida, students are creating deep fake porn of fellow students and spreading them among their friends and family members, sometimes extorting them. That's something that senators like Democrat Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire wants to stop. It's outrageous and we need to make sure that our laws keep up with this new technology and that we protect individuals. New bipartisan legislation co-authored by Hassan and Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas aims to hold accountable the individuals who share non-consensual intimate deep fake images online. They've proposed criminal penalties including a fine and up to two years in prison in most cases. Civil penalties can range up to $150,000. Why not go a step further and criminalize the creation of non-consensual intimate images? There is work going on in Congress right now about how to set up this kind of guardrail, but what we know is that most people don't know about the deep fake that exists until somebody tries to distribute it, right? So we wanted to really attack this problem at the point where it becomes obvious and somebody is likely to take action. Senator Cornyn says while it could take months to get the bill through the Senate, he's confident that bipartisan support will help it pass. We're not going to take our foot off the gas pedal. We're going to continue to press this issue because I think as long as the bill is not law, there are people taking advantage of the absence of this sort of punishment um, to uh, exploit people using these deep fakes. Breeze Liu isn't waiting around, though. She founded Electo AI, a startup to help others swiftly identify and remove deep fakes they find of themselves online. I came to the conclusion that unless I change the system, unless I change the world, justice wouldn't even be an option for me. Leo and her team created a prototype of a facial recognition tool to help individuals swiftly search for harmful images of themselves and then get them taken down. And Leo also says the FBI is now investigating her case, and she's also part of a class action lawsuit against Pornhub. Pornhub, meanwhile, told us it swiftly removes any non-consensual material on its platform, including deep fakes. The site also said it has several protocols in place to prevent non-consensual material from being uploaded. Deepfakes have also become a tool for scammers to target your money. Coming up, how they're playing on your personal connections and your emotions to try to get you to pay up. Today we're looking at the impact of AI and deep fakes and one big way that scammers are using this technology is to target your money, often recreating the voices of loved ones, making it seem like they're in distress. And she goes, Mommy's bad men have you. Help me, help me, help me. And this man gets on very aggressive. Listen, here I had your daughter. And then that's when I went into panic mode. This man comes on the phone. He said, you're going to give me $5,000. I heard our daughter on the phone. Like, it was unmistakably her. Yeah, frauds, fraudsters are also using AI and deepfakes as a tool to trick people out of their sensitive personal information to get their money. According to the Federal Trade Commission, Americans lost more than $126 million to Social Security scammers last year. The fraudsters often contact victims by phone, text, or social media. Thanks for joining us for today's conversation on deep fakes and what's being done to protect our election process from them. We'd like to hear what you think. Post your thoughts online using the hashtag KPIX. CBS Evening News is next on KPIX, and local news continues on our streaming service, CBS News Bay Area. Hi, thanks so much for watching. To view more content like this, we've selected some videos that we think you'll enjoy. And don't forget to like or click that button here on the bottom left of your screen to subscribe.